No, I don't shop at Walmart. That's not a brag. I don't look down on people who regularly have to go out of financial necessity. I'm just saying, maybe if I did, I would have noticed something sooner. It was late at night, and I was out of a lot of essentials. I had just gone off an all-day shift, and tomorrow was looking to be no different. I was resigning myself to having no toilet paper, no soap, and no milk till my next day off. I then remembered I was also out of lunch meat and just went, fuck it. No way I was being braving the workday without my customary sandwich tooled around my beater, trying to find a 7-Eleven or something along those lines when I saw that parking lot behemoth. I'm sure we could all recognize in our sleep by now. I reviewed my options and resignedly turned my blinker on. The parking lot was almost empty. There was no carts loose in the lot, which was a first for any store I'd been to. I got out of my car and walked into the store. The first problem didn't even hit me until I was securely inside the building and probably would have driven any seasoned Wally Worlder scamping or scampering in the other direction. The sign said, Walmart, like in two L's, not Walmart. My tired brain dismissed it as a reading comprehension error. Instead of the first of many signs that something was very much wrong. The greeter was at the door, was an overweight man or woman, didn't look too hard, didn't even care, who said, welcome to Walmart, with accents on the wrong syllables, so it came out, well, come to Walmart. Again, tired and not paying much attention, didn't even know what to expect just snagged my cart, which moved slightly better than a boulder with the square wheels, and set off. This place, man, it was big. I'm no newcomer to warehouse stores, but this place just went on and on. Shoved my cart down in endless aisles, looking for any sign of my necessities. It seemed like Every aisle was just a mishmash of the same cheap shit, regardless of the sh signs. Saw value, packs of tools, toys, electronics, plasticware, everyone, everything I except what I needed. The next weird thing presented itself when I was examining one of the items. The thing was a five pack of flyer pliers, but when I picked it up, found it and it was an empty bag. Pliers behind the plastic were just pictures. I thought, sure, it was probably just a security measure and I would have to bring it up, the cashier, and they'd fetch the real one from a security case. Then I looked at the next one, a pack of forks, same deal. Picked up a container of bleach, empty. Not the only one at this, in the store at the time. A couple of people, as confused as me, were wandering around, looking lost. An old lady looked at my shirt, hopefully, and opened her mouth, and I shook my head. At a store this big, you had to have a lot of pers personnel, didn't you? Courtsy clerks, loss prevention, stalkers, works. I dragged my cart around. Looking for an elusive breed. After, I kid you not, 10 minutes, I abandoned the cart because it was slowing me down. Still no employee in sight. I had heard of rip-off stores before. Places like China, where they had fake Apple stores so good that even the employees didn't know who they were working for. But this was America. Why would they do something like that here and... To what end? 
Anyone who tried it, it would probably get sued into the ground by corporate lawyers before they could open their doors. I had nearly given up on finding a clerk when I caught a glimpse of something going around in the corner, dressed in those Wally World scrubs. I trotted after calling, excuse me. It didn't slow down. It got ex- it got louder. I got louder. Excuse me. Switched to a light jog. Somehow this person stayed well ahead of me, despite appearing to be strolling at a casual pl- pace. I broke into a run. Someone walked out of the aisle ahead of us, pushing another stubborn cart, looking the other way. The clerk turned to go down in one of the other aisles. The other side of the clerk looked exactly the same. Stopped in my tracks, not sure what I had just seen. The other customer caught sight of the clerk, leaving and huffed and puffed, pushing their cart and after the retreating specter. I had just seen the clerk turned a complete 180 degrees and never seen a face. The front of the clerk had been identical to the back. No facial features, nothing at all. I looked up and realized I had no idea where I was. The clerk had only led me deeper and deeper into the store. There were no windows, and the place in the aisles stretched on for even longer than I had originally gathered. The hell was this place, I shivered a little. Time to find the doors. I hunted fr- fruitlessly down the aisles for a while before realizing what an idiot I was. I needed to find a wall until I followed that unit until I hit the front. Easy as pie, right? Wrong. I found the wall and walked along its surface. I made five per- perpendicular I- turns. Five times I followed the wall exactly. No front doors. I was starting to become really scared. Okay, this wasn't a real store, but why couldn't I find the door? I thought about it and figured that maybe they had a way to disguise the doors on the side of the wall. So that, that when they closed, they disappeared. Nobody looked back when they walked in the store, did they? I continued walking my circuit, patting the wall, looking for a likely pace. Hello? Is there anyone there? A shaky voice came to the aisle's cap behind me. I wasn't really ready to trust anyone in this place, but I thought it wouldn't hurt to answer. I'm here. Are you another customer? Oh, thank God. It was a lady's voice. I could hear the scrape of a cart dragging on the tile, tile floor. I've been here for hours. My cell doesn't get any reception in here. Could you help me out? I seem to be lost. Sure, I looked down the next aisle. Can you walk in a straight line over me? I'm sorry, this aisle appears to be capped here. It's just shelves on the either side and then a dead end. Can you follow it to the other dead end? I've tried. Maybe you could see something I'm missing. A lot of misgivings, I stepped away from the wall and down the aisle. I tried to guide the woman with my voice. She was very apologetic for them troubling me. She felt so she felt so silly for getting lost in a straight line, and her husband would think. I hit the end of the aisle and got a cold chill. There was an aisle cap extra wide. The aisles to either side were empty. I called, are you there? Yes, do you see anything? Do you? I just see another shelf with all the same shit that's on the others. Her voice held a touch of panic. I don't know how I got myself in here. There's something, there's some opening. I'm not seeing it. Maybe I wandered into the employee only area? 
It was hard to swallow past the lump in my throat. Maybe, I lied. Listen, I'm going to find the front door and call someone, okay? I'll be back as soon as I can. Just try not to go somewhere that's that doesn't open up, okay? Okay, the woman seemed a little better now. That she is she had the comforting lie that someone would take care of. I had no idea what I was doing, but she didn't know she didn't need to know that. I found the wall again and followed it, aggressively punching shelves. I scattered useless merchandise, mock-ups to look for secret entrances. The space between aisles got longer. I would see an aisle cap too, three aisles wide. I heard the other people calling out. I started to run along the wall, looking for seams. There were no checkouts stands, no food court, nothing to do where indicate where the doors might be. It was a seamless cube of junk and I was running laps fruitlessly. My first and only stroke of luck hit me that night. I found the greeter. From far away, it looked like a person. From the corner of your eye, if you were distracted and not paying attention, it looked like a person. But if you really studied it, you had realized it was a bunch of weird formations on its head that only just looked like a face. Sort of like those pictures made up a thousand of colored dots. It only looked like a, a thing from further back. Up close was just a bunch of meaninglessly blobs. The greeter waddled along and like it didn't know how to walk. Not an exaggeration, but I did kept putting its feet wrong and twisting its body like it wasn't used to being bipedal. I crept up behind it and grabbed its shirt collar. The greeter blinked. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It had no eyes, just a bunch of stubs that cast shadows that happened to look like f eyes from far away. It creeped me out so much that I let go of its collars. Where's the door, I demanded. The thing shuffled a little. Welcome to Walmart. Where's the fucking door? I gave the thing a little shove. Look, if you let me out, I won't call the cops. Just let me go. The greeter looked around. Then back at me, well, come to Walmart. I had a horrible realization dawn on me, like the double-sided clerk. This probably only had one purpose. I wasn't going to get anywhere with it, because there was literally nowhere to go. I went a little crazy then, was hungry, tired, and desperate. I threw the greeter at the wall, and it ripped like a condom of full of jello. The wall opened up. I could smell the sweet night air free of freedom and started running. Good thing, too, because the wall was almost immediately started closing as I ran. It hit me on the elbow hard. I had a bruise for days, but I was out. The greeter wasn't so lucky. I could hear the squeals as the door pinched shut on it. But I didn't stop to look. I ran to my car and gunned it out there. Parked in a nearby strip mall and called the cops. I'm afraid that it was I wasn't the best reporter, though. Somewhere between spouting off of, about a fake Walmart and prisoners, the dispatcher hung up on, on me. So I decided to drive to a police station. But my slightly calmer story was only met with skepticism. After what seemed like hours, I finally got an officer who agreed to accompany me to the site. Here's the thing. I had been aimlessly driving around when I stumbled on the Walmart. I had been panicked as I fled from it. Now I had to admit I was completely lost. The officer eventually told me if I couldn't find the store. I wanted... I would have to come back and file a report. I let them go and fled back to my apartment, swallowing down my guilt. 
I had let everyone trapped in that store down. I hoped that they could at least hang on until morning. I called in my to my to, I called in sick to my job and drove around, searching for the Walmart. I looked through every shopping center, strip mall, anywhere that was slightly resembled the place I had gone last night. Finally, I found a donut place I remember from that night, where and from there I was able to retrace my route. I wound up upon at a big warehouse type building that with that familiar parking lot, all of the last cars still in place. The building was empty, no signs, no shelves, nothing. And I've been looking around since then. Every chance I get, and I've never seen another Walmart.